JD here to all of us. And as you can see, we are back on F1 2021 here today. And we are here again with some more PlayStation lobbies. This time a 25% at Jeddah in Saudi Arabia. So as usual, going to be showing you the complete full race. And this is one of the favorite ones I've actually done recently so so we're starting in mercedes equal cars We've got four lights five lights here and as they go out starting on the medium tires all the alternate strategy but i think everyone by default actually starts on these tires uh, anyway around this circuit so we're just going to leave a bit of room going to turn one and yeah this is actually one of my favorite races i've actually done in quite a while because i did a playstation video recently has no idea what on earth is happening here so as usual just avoiding all of the carnage and we gain seven positions for doing that and this guy I'm not sure Spanish is actually a good friend of mine having an unfortunate moment there but yeah Jeddah when this track first came out I didn't think it'd be that great for racing but I think I was definitely proven wrong because this is one of my favorite tracks to play online against other people as well. It's notoriously difficult to get out of people's DRS zones. If they're pretty much less than a second slower than you, and it's really, really hard to pull away from people. And you will see that as we go towards the end of this video. But so far, so good. And the way I drive in these lobbies is pretty much trying to replicate exactly the way I would drive uh, in a league race and I think the last league race I did around here was in ORL against F1 eSport drivers where we were going four wide into the final lap felt like we had the pace to win that day but came off a bit worse uh, than the others and just to let you know coachlimits.com for one-to-one -one coaching of me I will only be doing coaching for the rest of this month because for the month of June I will be away for some of it but also preparing for f122 so if you really would like a session of me on this game then go to www.coachlimits.com it's only a few slots remaining and i just want to say as well thank you so much for everyone for the support on that and also in the youtube membership hopefully people are seeing the benefits of that and yeah i just really really do thank you so much and you can see now we're up into P11. The setup we've got on here is almost identical to the one we used in ORL as well. And the key to here now is uh, one of the mediums. We've got a guy behind us that's on mediums as well. He does have a three second time penalty, but everyone ahead of us, a lot of people ahead of us, are on the soft. So if you're this close to people on softs, you're already in a very very good position because once I go on the softs at the end and they are on the older and slower mediums then the alternate strategy is pretty OP around here it is incredibly fast and you will just see how OP it is as dearest at nil sets the fastest lap of the race that's good to know that we're not losing really any time to the leaders since we are pretty much lapping at the same pace as Jesse has disconnected so now we're up into uh, P10 and all we have to do now is try and stay within the DRS zone of these guys up ahead which the detection point was just before that right hander and you can see we've managed to get in a bit quite comfortably saving quite a lot of ERS which is something you really do want to do around here because again, getting out the DRS zone of other people is notoriously difficult. So we are going to be quite patient. But yeah, the alternative strategy, I'd say, is one of the most powerful around this circuit. So we're thinking about trying to get this guy done to then get in the detection point of the cars up ahead, which we should be able to do because there's another two DRS zones to come around here and yeah this is probably the most powerful track for DRS because you're just flat out all the time 
not really too much a driver can do through the corners. Really, it's just all about carrying that momentum. Because there's such high speed. And, yeah, unless you're a second faster, it's going to be incredibly difficult to break out the arrest zone here as we're coming up alongside Speed Alcoholic. I love a regular in my lobby, so go go around the outside of him. He's on the mediums here, so almost effectively for position. Making a slight bit of contact, but deciding to live for another day. And, you know, he's got a good pace himself, so we're just going to sit behind at this stage, but not really needing to be so much in a rush because I have a lot of ERS available. And I think around this circuit, a lot of people quite often waste their battery and it's pretty difficult to recoup it um, as well. And you can see at the moment, I think we have a little bit more pace than speed alcoholic up front. So again, we're just gonna keep nice and uh, patient here Please let me know what content you would like to see from me at the release of F1 22. I have quite a few ideas myself, but if there's anything in particular um, you would like to see from me, then please let me know. I will probably be doing a lot more tutorials on specific things, such as turning off traction control, as unfortunately the Ferrari made a bit of a mistake there. And now we're going to try and get within the DRS zone, so we're actually activating it here because the detection point is on the exit of last corner. So just trying to be as efficient as possible and we have reached that detection point. But yeah, for F122, I will probably be doing a lot more specific videos when it comes to trail braking, traction, turning off the racing line. I think those things are quite useful uh, for people. Also a setup explanation video, which I didn't do on last year's game. I did it on 2020, but not on 2021. I think with how the wing configuration is now where it's between 1 and 50 I think that hopefully will be useful to uh, many people as well but you can see here now we've managed to stay within the DRS zone of DRS Neil <laughs> funny enough and we've got Energy Zeus up ahead in P5 he's three seconds up the road and in the lobbies prior to this it was actually a pretty fast competitive driver himself so I want to try and use Neil as much as I can so a lot of the time in races people win too much of a rush to overtake people at the first opportunity but you kind of got to think of a game of chess you've got to think ahead um, just a little bit more um, because is it really beneficial because if I overtook him going to hit the last corner he would simply just DRS me back so I'm quite comfortable just sitting behind him here and then getting the momentum off this last corner itself. So we're going to let him have this. Try and get a good exit. Now we're going to use the uh, DRS itself and using the overtake button. So we're going to try and get back on the racing line before turn one itself. And now the gap is uh, 2.1 seconds to... I'm not sure who it was. I think AG Zeus has actually gone up into P3. But there's another guy in the mediums called... Majzo. <laughs> I'm really, really bad at pronouncing names, but the goal here now is to try and uh, get within his DRS zone by the end of the lap. So, a lot of these open lobbies really do teach me uh, when to push and when to be conservative um, as well. And I think that's the reason why I normally have a quite a high chance of success. There's a little bit of an instant here, so that has really helped me out a ton, but Doing these topics like this really does, for me, has taught me when to push and uh, when to back off effectively. And I think that's a mistake. A lot of people who are probably maybe even faster than me on raw speed, they just don't know when to stop pushing at that 100%. And instead of thinking within the next two seconds of a decision, they've got to think, what impact does this have in a, a few laps time? And then if you start doing that, then I feel you become much, much more uh, consistent in terms of your results as well. So coming off the exit of this quarter, we've got uh, Don up ahead of us. Is he going to pit? Yes, he is. And I don't think we're going to be close enough to make a move here. So we have caught up to edging Zeus here. So the pace is looking pretty good at this stage of the race. So 
we're just going to slot in behind the Williams. We still have uh, plenty of ERS on board, so when we do decide to pit, we should be coming out pretty close to 100% uh, as well. So, go through the Seekers Accorders, doing it fairly okay. Got the DRS zone here, so the DRS is just... It's really only the first sector where you can actually make a difference in your driving in terms of getting away from someone because you've got so many of those rapid changes of direction and some slow speed corners as well but going through here towards the end of the lap it is just absolutely ridiculous and yeah there's nothing you can do because you're just driving pretty much uh, flat out in a straight line with a few corners like this coming up where you go down a couple of gears but then you're straight back on that power uh, once again. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to probably sit behind him now. So there's no real point trying to overtake at this stage of the race. So they're going to go side by side. One of these guys is not going to get the DRS on the exit of here. And let's see who that actually is. So it looks like it is the Williams. So Zeus Pitts. And we're going to take the race out. His red light was flashing as well. So he is very, very low on the battery power. And Zeus, like I said, is a pretty fast driver himself. He's going to go for an undercut here with the softs, which are going to be quite fast. But now we're actually going to push pretty hard on this lap as we've got the benefit of the DRS going down the main straight. And let's see how much faster we can actually go so take it really early for this car if you want to try and mount that as much as you can and we are almost matching what our pb is so far gap is about eight tenths of a second to the wheels behind and i know he doesn't really have much ers at all so i was quite confident i could get out the DRS zone as long as we get this corner right which we do pretty nicely there get a really good exit now we're going to use the DRS to try and break out of that detection point and you can see on the top left hand side of the screen you've pretty much just done that in that sector alone and the detection point is right about here it was about a tenth behind so you don't have to use any of the battery for this one because you can see that delta is just going up and up as he is under 10% of the battery so we now have got to pick this lap because you don't want to be undercutted too much uh, by Energy Zeus and if we went on an extra lap it would only give us effectively three laps to go here so deciding to pit now put on the very very fast soft tyres and the lap was a pretty nice one as well so we're going to have a lap fresher tyres which does make a difference around here among quite a few other tracks so go through it to here now let's see if we have been undercut at all so you can see he He's going around the first corner, but we have come out uh, just ahead of him. Just ahead of him. So, yeah, we've actually made the overcut uh, work in this case. We actually have gained time and overcut him through the pace we had there. So, you can see, coming out of the pits, we have about 75% of the ERS as well. And I would probably say, in terms of raw pace maybe half a second or more between myself and Zeus but as I said before Jeddah the DRS zones are just so so OP and the good thing we do have is that we do have that slightly uh, fresher tyres but yeah with only three laps or four laps to go it shouldn't make a significant difference if it was maybe 10 laps it would but yeah now we've got to be actually quite calculated in terms of how we approach this race because if we risk everything of the ERS then we're going to be left very very vulnerable coming towards the end of the race and you can just see how powerful this uh, DRS zone is so I think now I'm actually going to try and attempt to uh, break out of the uh, DRS zone itself so I'm gambling everything with the battery power here so as you come into tell one we're really trying to take a lot of cups as much as possible. Fastest lap is a 28.6. Let's see what we can do here. So we are going absolutely pushed here now. Let's see if we have enough pace to break out of here. So absolutely nailing this corner. We're going to be going almost flat out through here. As close as you dare. 
Uh, didn't do that too badly, could have been better, but today nice and early into this. And the gap is about almost seven tenths of a second, so about a sector, half a second up of what we have done previously. Now coming through here, try and stay as tight as you possibly can. Let the car unwind on the exit using the ERS again. Because the gap is eight tenths of a second, so it's trying to nail this as much as we can. And a little bit on the cautious side, the gap is over one second now, so... We're going to keep pushing a little bit, but then we are going to tell off the ERS because we've got to save a bit for that last sector as well. But coming through it here, try and get as much speed as we possibly can. Happy to evade, and we have come out of the DRS zone. But if we use the battery here, we're going to have absolutely nothing. And you can see he is using all of his battery here to get in the detection point. And the problem is, if I used everything, then I wouldn't have enough to save coming into the last episode of this race. So we're using everything here. And we run out of the point completely, but he has got still maintained the DRS zone to 28.1. And yeah, we gave it everything there, but we couldn't quite break out. And now we've put ourselves in quite a vulnerable position with the battery power as well, because it is pretty hard to recoup the battery here. So yeah, got to be a bit tactical uh, coming into this last race. You can see how much we pulled away from the Williams in uh, P3. And right now, I'm just trying to stretch him as much as possible, try and force him to use the ERS to stay within my DRS zone. Uh, but right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be uh, quite enough itself. So trying to nail this, kind of front onto here, we did this, this pretty well, uh, but he gets a pretty good exit himself. And yeah, if I used it here, I'm leaving myself in a very, very vulnerable position coming into this last lap. So giving it everything for a new sequence, of course. But you'll see how much he closes up. So that detection point there, he's got the DRS now. And you'll just see how quickly he just closes it in. It's going to be three to almost four tenths just in that sector alone. And then there's another DRS. So... so Getting in the DRS there, you're rewarded with a second dose of DRS down the straight. And he's effectively almost gained seven tenths going through just those two zones. It's someone almost going for the overtake into turn one. But we have no choice but to save it. So I wanted him to actually overtake me at this stage of the race itself. So the DRS here now, I think it's above, just above... 40-ish percent if I can read that correctly so we do have a little bit of ammunition to use just for this uh, last lap itself but he's managing to actually stay with me quite nicely another DRS zone here which allows him to just get even closer going into this uh, middle sector so if I was him I would literally just be staying behind right now He's able to save more battery than me since he is being helped with the DRS itself. And you can see the gap is about six tenths, seven tenths of a second here. So we're going to see once again how much he actually closes in coming through into these last two sectors. So we haven't used any of the ERS for the last two laps itself. And you'll be able to see uh, coming through here. So it's looking like it's going to be a pretty difficult last lap itself but as we come through this last corner something you will notice as we're going to pause the video in a second he's quite close here but if you go ahead and look at the mini map on the right hand side there is a lapped car up ahead and it's actually a ghost car because i was paying attention to that on the lap previous and when someone leaves the lobby, the ghost car does remain. And the AI is set to quite low here. So coming into this last lap, I was really paying attention to that. So I decided not to intentionally slow down and let him go here. Because I need to catch this ghost car coming into this last sector. So we're just giving it absolutely everything as much as we can. Still saving the ERS just in case he does overtake us into the last quarter. So give it everything through this sequence of quarters. But if you pay attention, and you might be able to see it as we go through into the next quarter, we are coming up to this ghost car at almost the perfect, perfect timing. So you can see it up here now. 
Now we are using the ERS because I want to get within that detection point and this has almost been timed or pretty much is tied to perfection here. Coming through to the detection points on the exit of this core. Here's the detection point and we should be within a second. Do we get the ERS? Yes, we do. And that is an absolute lifeline. You can see he had quite a lot of ERS because he's really closing in pretty quickly here. He's going to have it on the exit of this corner. But we have a lot of momentum actually going pretty wide into here. But we have some ERS to play with on the exit. And we have timed that to absolute perfection. GG Energy Zeus, that was a very, very nice race in the end. Managing to anticipate that ghost car and use it to our benefit. And yeah, that was a very, very fun race to do itself. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you go to coachlimits.com if you would like a session of me on this game. Because um, I'm only really doing it for the next week now. Um, other than that, make sure you sign up and register to buy a bit for the F122 giveaway at the end of this month. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. And also, before we go, a special shout out to some new extra rotation members as well. So I'm going to absolutely butcher this, but M R T E F 1, C H O U E R I 89, Vinco Medic, Mad Rabbit, and Igor C1. Thank you so much for joining the Extra Rotation Club and I will be catching you very, very soon. Peace.